Okay. So um, if you guys go to the standby for systems, then these secret book guys have three systems that you're going to need a, some type of a generator for them. One is called the emergency system. The other one is legally required standby system. And the third one is um, optional standby system. All these require generators. The emergency system, guys, you can solve the problem without a gen by having lights. Most of the lights, exit, sign, exit signs, emergency lights, need a backup power. Your backup power for these require you to have either batteries inside the, these fixtures or bug eyes or require you to have an emergency panel with an emergency generator that must come synchronize, pick up the load within 60 seconds, within uh, 10 seconds. Legally required if you have a jail and you have a bunch of locks in the jail and a bunch of uh, heating system in the jail, uh, these are also required to be backed up because you cannot evacuate those people somewhere else if you lose power. You need to continue to operate. So what they do is they have a system that required by code and requires to come up to speed, energize, and feed the building. And the last one is optional. Chad Curdy would like to have a generator in, the, in his, um, in his uh, backyard. And, um, and just in case you lost power, I want to run um, on a generator. So that will cover the three cases. This will cover three cases. They call it standby power system. Standby power system is not the utility, is a generating mechanism that you have um, on site, that you have on site. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit, like I said, guys, about this one very important topic. Standby system. Um, before before I go there, I want to remind you guys, this is, there's an article that says Article 700. Article 701 and 702 in the NEC code book that talk about emergency system, legally required, and optional. These are emergency system, legally required, and optional. This will apply to all of them. Apply to all of them. Okay. Uh, the first thing we, ne we need to do, guys, when you own an operated generator, now you own an operated generator, there are other safety issues that you have to be aware of, guys. Safety concerning options that by our support system. You're running a diesel engine generator or natural gas engine generator. There's fumes to pay attention to. There's fire hazard. There's more hazard than just bringing power lines into your building. So you have to be aware of that one. Uh, basics of standby power system. What does it do for a living? How does it work? We'll talk about this one. <coughs> Types of standby power systems. Um, how do you bring the generator power into your building safely, right? So these are the stuff that we're going to be talking about. Uh, wiring diagrams for portable and standby power system. So if you have a portable a generator in the back of your truck, how do you hook up a generator portable in the back of your truck into your power system in your house and power it safely, right? Or, or if it's fixed, how do you also hook up a, a standby power system fixed into your system? Um, with standby and generators, there's a term that we call it transfer switch, disconnect means, and size recommendation. Um, generator guys require you to have a disconnect, a wire that goes from the gen to your power system, a means of transferring the power from the generator to the utility and vice versa. They call this a transfer switch. You're going to see in a second. And any secret book guys. Uh, recommendation for standby by power system, like I said, there are three articles, 700, 701, and 702. And we will talk about this one, not today, as we move into the commercial, because it applies more to the commercial. Okay, a couple of safety, a couple of safety, guys. What happened if you have a generator and you go plug the generator right here into your, um, into your system? When you generate power, guys, you generate power at certain frequency. Here's the frequency coming from my generator, and here's the frequency that's coming out of the electrical utilities. Are these frequencies in sync? In sync means matching, like this. If they're out of sync and you hook them up, you will blow up your generator. Now, when you have, now remember, you are generating power. You're not consuming power. If you're consuming power, who cares? One signal coming from the Excel into your building, you utilize, cook that signal, and do whatever you want to do with, with, with that signal, right? Utilize it. If you're generating a signal, then now we have two signals. We have one coming, this signal is coming from utility. This signal is coming from generator. As long as they're not in sync, 
if they're not in sync, um, one has to die. So what do you, who do you think is going to die in the process of fight, right? Uh, you think your ge little generator in your backyard is going to be able to kill the grid? I hope not. So you, <laughs> I hope not. So what's going to happen? Your generator will be knocked down by the grid if they're not in sync. So there's a lot of syncing issues when you put your generator. So the first thing and the most important thing is we talk about syn synchronizing generator, guys. And for dwellings, there, it's not an option. Almost for all dwellings, no synchronization whatsoever. So the most important thing when you bring a power is to disconnect the power. So here's my gen. Here's my uh, utility. I need to have a disconnect here that makes sure um, that it will either go to the generator or to the grid, but not both at the same time. Can I have thumbs up, chat? We understand. So important for dwelling that you, when you put your generator on, your utility is off and vice versa. You can't put them on at the same time. Later on for the commercial project, guys, we start doing synchronization. Then they, they synchronize them as, and when you synchronize with not in dwelling, you put the two signals together. Can, can you see now if the two signals are, are matching like this, they don't actually have to match, they just reach the, the top at the same time, like, like this. Here's what they're saying. They don't have to be the same value, but they, they swing together. Look at that. That's what's synchronized. They swing together. Up and down. Imagine a swing if you have, you guys don't have kids. When you take your kids to swing and you have two of them and you're pushing two of them at the same time, they don't have to reach the height at the same time. But as, the, as long as they swing together, come back together. That's what synchronization is. Don't think about this one in dwellings. That doesn't happen because you have to have electronics to do that. Then you have to have isolation. Um, okay, operate. So hooking up, when hooking up the standby generator, turn off the power. The most important thing is turn off the power. Right? You don't turn off the power though. They have legally and um, based on the code, they don't want to just turn the switch on and off. They have to have mechanical interface. So you don't if you don't, if you forgot to turn off the power, what's gonna happen? You're gonna blow up your generator, right? So what they want you guys to do is they have mechanical interlock, and you'll see how so if as you turn the utility on, the switch of the generator is off and vice versa. So you can't turn them on even if you want to at the same time, both of them. That's one way. Operate the generator outside, outside in the fresh air to prevent a uh, buildup of carbon monoxide. Generators, guys, they run most of generators either natural gas, a lot of generators, small ones, natural gas or uh, diesel. Um, diesel, natural gas, or um, so when you run these natural gas, or diesel generators, they, they they create a lot of carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is colorless, colorless, odorless, um, so poisonous, colorless, odorless. So if you're running, if you put your generator in your basement and you run it, um, bad news, poison. You will poison yourself. So long story short, when you're dealing with um, with generators, you have to to uh, run them outside. Store the gasoline that you're running them at, uh, natural gas or gasoline or, or, or diesel, whatever you're running them at. Um, storage area, store gasoline properly because this is flammable. So you get into storing the flammable material that you're going to burn, number one. Burning them when you start, they start it outside. So that's a, a few safety things that you have to do. Um, when you're dealing with electrical, since your generator is outside now, you can't run it inside. We agreed on that. You have to store the flammable uh, gasoline or diesel or natural gas. If you have a tank of natural gas or propylene or whatever you're running on your generator on, you're going to store it in a proper way, right? Uh, then we're outside. Now, when you're outside, what happened? You're going to be standing in water when dealing with electrical. So do not stand in water and work on electrical equipment with wet hands. Now remember guys, the perfect shock that sent you to join the Lord is what? You get energized object grabbing on, barefoot, standing in mud. That sent you straight to heaven. You know, anything in between, you know, if you're wearing shoes and it will have an installation. So uh, if you're working outside with electrical, just be aware that you most likely it could Will be wet location and you could be wet and then so you have to avoid as much as you could touching any images objects 
always follow the manufacturing instruction guys when you start and stop and and, and maintain your maintain your generators okay um why standby generators running during so the the most important thing for standby uh, generators now i want to remind you we're doing dwelling dwellings as a single family dwelling uh, does not require an emergency system now if you have an apartment building they require you to have an emergency lighting system a lot of apartment building they solve the problem guys by having bug eyes a bug eyes is battery operated lights um it give you what is it an hour and a half or something of light up on the last of the power so people can exit the apartment building they put them in the hallways in, a, in an apartments and stairways but for dwelling single and and uh, and double family dwellings you don't need an emergency system but you decide because you want to run your, your furnace in the middle of winter you lose power refrigerator freezer the essential loads in a house essential for me probably my computer my internet but essential typically in the middle of winter furnace refrigerator and freezer because that spoils your food these are most essential is the air conditioning an essential not really you can you can handle heat but in minnesota you can't you know you lose power if you don't have heat in your house you freeze your um your pipes and you're you're doomed man a lot of damage so that's what a lot of people have the generator for typically furnace refrigerator freezer and in the process you can throw a couple of outlets for your plasma tv right and a couple of lights so you can watch and enjoy it um you must answer a question which load now these are the so-called the critical load. so first you pick the critical load then of course another critical load gets a couple of lights you have to have a lighting circuit um like if you have two-story house you have to have at least um one circuit um, and one light in every story that have uh, have backed up by generators so you have light in every story okay um how large the generator would be why can't i put the whole house on the generator guys if you put your whole house on generator your generator is going to be bigger that's all can you yes um how simple or complex the system would be if you want to back up the whole house you're looking at 10 kw generators they're expensive um a lot of people guys what they have they have five kw generators and they back up back up certain parts of your your building seven and a half kw generator for uh, if you're not starting your AC units, and if you don't have um, if you if you don't have uh, electrical dryers and electrical range and air conditioning, if you don't run these, uh, 7.5 kW generator should cover almost everything in your house, except the major load. Okay, so a lot of people have a smaller generator to back up just the essential critical systems. What type of standby power system are available? There's a couple of things, guys. You can go from very simple system, most common portable generators. That's what a lot of people have. Um, the simplest one you have that consists of gasoline-driven motor generator. That's what they do. It's one set, manually started. You go crank it outside, portable, manually started, gasoline-driven. Um, it can run to give you this amount of hours up on the loss of power. You can run your generator, you can run your furnace, you can run your uh, micro, micro, uh, not my furnace, you can run your uh, refrigerator, your freezer. Um, sizes, guys, common is 7kW, 5kW, available in sizes up to 7kW. So a lot of people have a 2, 3kW generator just to pick up the furnace, their furnace, and their freezers. <laughs> They come with an extension cord. These guys are not an extension cord that runs to the critical load. An extension cord that runs to the critical load. I'm going to show you guys how that how that goes. Here's um to the a critical load. So let's go to I'm going to take you to the portable generator. Not not this one. I'm going to go to the the, the easiest one that you can get. is um that one here's a portable generator guys the utility is using all the time so you have a, a sump pump you do have a sump pump and you lost the power you lost the power for the sump pump what you do is you pull unplug you have a plug here you have a plug here you go unplug uh, the sump pump will be plugged in here right you unplug that sump pump start your generator and plug it into the generator 
That's the cheapest, easiest way of doing it. They use them in construction site all the time, right? A generator portable, you guys have seen a portable generator, 510 KW, sit on site and they plug them in for the people who are working on the site. That's that's the cheapest, easiest way of having a generator. There's one other problem though. Uh, this can be as, as high as 10 KW. 10 KW. Typically 5 KW, 7.5 KW. And you can have, I believe they can have more of these. These are um, up to 15 kW, actually almost 15. I would say 15 kW, so it's the code referred to 15 kW. Um, the NEC code book guys require the receptacles. Can you guys see it? The 120, 122, 40, 15, 20, and 30 amp receptacle on the generator to be GFCI'd, in use cover, timber resistant. That's requirement came in 2008. So if you have a generator, you buy. You, we don't interfere with this. When you buy a generator, the manufacturer now to have, they have to have in-use cover on them, GFCI, and and weather, not temper. I'm sorry, weather resistant, weather resistant in-use cover, GFCI. Um, okay, so that's the cheapest that you can get. But there, how are you going to put your air conditioning here? Really, you want to make your air conditioner plugged in? So that's kind of almost. Almost the only way you can use this one is if you run your generator outside and you have an extension cord, plug it in and have a plug-in light. That's all that you can do. Um, you can't plug your furnace. Your furnace is hardwired. You can't, your refrigerator you can. What you can do is run the generator out, have an extension cord, plug into the generator, bring the extension cord into the uh, house and plug in, in multiple of them, plug in your furnace into it and your refrigerator, but not, not your furnace, your furnace and your freezer, right? and your plasma TV. That's the only way you can do that. Obviously, we don't want to do that. So you get into the second one, guys, and we'll... Um, a second step above that. Okay, so let's, uh, let's see. Here's a second step above that, is when you decide, here's my generator, it's a portable generator. Can you guys see that? Portable generator, you have a power outlet here. Can you guys see the power outlet? These are typically, I don't know how many of you guys have seen them. So what you do is, you take your main panel, there's your 200 amp panel, 200 amp panel. You take a 40 amp panel, can you guys see the 40 amp panel coming from here, to a separate called critical panel. And then from here, you feed your furnace, and you feed your uh, fridge, fridge, and you feed your lights, some lights, and you feed from here your... Um, uh, what else do we need? The critical, for example. Uh, let's just see if we have light fridge or freezer. Okay, so here's four circuits. You decide that these four circuits, four circuits, not four devices, four circuits. So you can have five lights here. You can have for the refrigerator and uh, you can have uh, multiple things with the refrigerator if you want the multiple receptacles, a couple of receptacles extra for you. So by doing it this way, guys, you have to hire an electrician. Um, you bring a conduit or a cable between the two, and here's the cord. This cord, can you guys see that cord comes with the generator? No receptacles typically in the generator, but you can have. You plug it into an outlet. These outlets, guys, are male. They call them, um, so this side here, the outside that you plug in, it has to be the female side. The plug in, so the the hot and the ground are inside. So inside the plug, the plug in the wall is be the female part. And and the cable, on the side of the cable, it will be, no, the male will be on the on the wall and the female will be on the, on the cable. So this is nothing. If you're holding it in your hand, you're not looking, you can't touch anything. So you bring your cable and the three hots, and these three hots are inside and you plug them in, in the switch. The reason why they do it this way, guys, so the male part, the male part is here, and the female part is here with the cable. Because you don't want to imagine I'm running your generator, and you're looking at Tata and neutral right here in your hand, right? The end of a, a switch, the male part of a switch for safety. So what they do, so you plug it in, you twist it, typically twist it. Now it locks. This is not plug and plug and twist. You plug and twist it, you power out with it. Now you're ready. You start your generator, guys. Then there is a switch here. This is a three-pole um, circuit breaker. Three-pole circuit breaker. A three-pole circuit breaker, guys, mechanically interlocked three-pole circuit breaker. So if you look at this, how they do it? 
They have mechanically analog three pole circuit breakers. Here is coming from the HLT is on. When you and there's three pole of them. There's three pole. You can see one, two, two for hot one, hot two, and the third one for the neutral. They're breaking the neutral. So when they switch, the utility is on. Now when you go physically, mechanically flip them, that's how they flip. Did you see that? They designed them to flip this way. So you can't just flip the, flip them this way. There's no way. They're interlocked. They can't go this way. They either you take one up, the other one is down. Up, down. So by doing it this way, they guarantee you that you cannot turn, you cannot tie them together. Can you guys see that? That's your transfer switch here. So now you go flip. If you want to be a, like right now, we're running on utility. If you're running a utility, then you break each one of these guys have a disconnect like these. Three disconnects. This is hot one, hot two, and this is the neutral, my neutral. Each one of them. Each one of them. So when you break, you break the two hot and neutral at the same time. When I connect here, connect two hot and neutral, break two hot neutral. Two hot neutral, two hot neutral. You break here, you connect here. That's how they work. Uh, if you can, if it's if you're 50 kW, you will require you to have this has to be a separately derived system. What is the separate derived system as? A separate derived system that you have to run your own neutral. You, you have to break the neutral. You are breaking your neutral. You're breaking your neutral. Um, you are breaking separate derived system. Uh, you're breaking the neutral as you tie to it. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Comments, any questions? You pull it. So one step above just a plug. Now we have a power outlet to plug it in and you power a sub panel. Any comments, guys? Any questions about that? So that's the next step, powering it through a sub panel. So you can see right now we're running, you're running, um, everything is running on the generator. You see that red stuff? Everything is running on gen. Now, if you are if you are to go run on utility. Look at that. Now the power is coming through the utilities. So under normal operating condition, guys, the way this works, under normal operating condition, your load will be fit, will be powered from the utility this way. Can you guys see that? When you lose power, you walk to your basement, you flip these switches. Now here's the utility on, generator off. You go flip them the other way. Then you go walk outside your generator, start your gen, plug your gen into this power out, West it, and now all your loads are up and running. So typically, we do it in this order, though. We start your generator, you plug your generator in here, and then you go down to your utilities room and flip the circuit breakers. Now all these loads are powered from the generator, only these loads. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Any comments? Any questions? So that's, that's basically just Yes, yeah, absolutely. That's that's what it is. Except there is a special thing here. These, in reality, these when you look at these, they will be sitting like this, guys. One, two, three. One, two, three. These are circuit breakers coming in here, and they're mechanically interlocked. Three circuit breakers. Three circuit breakers mechanically interlocked. So one will be up, one will be down. They have a handle between them that tie that you when every time you flip one up, it flips the other one down, and vice versa. Any comments, guys? Any questions? I can't emphasize mechanical interlocking for these. Now we're running on utilities. So normally your load will be up and running on utilities. When you lose the power, go start gen, plug your gen, twist it, go down to the basement, flip that mechanically interlocked 40 amp circuit breakers, and you are up and running. You're up and running on a generator. You're up and running on a generator. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Comments, questions? They drive sometimes. They drive a ground rod, guys, here when you run it. So you come over here and you tie it to the ground. You tie There's a place where you tie it to the ground rod next to it. So that's your generator. Let me see if we uh, got that one. So that's that's my running on generator. 
um, available standby system. Next step involved permanent. So that's portable. Can you guys see that? Everybody can see this is a portable one. Oops, not this one, Chad. Everybody can see that this is a portable one. One step higher. It's still portable. Still portable. Let me grab my uh, highlighter. But um, do I have it here? Okay, yeah. So this is my portable. Now I need to go to something more permanent. Let's look at this, guys. So the next step is to go to permanent wiring, permanent wiring and port and plug connection. Okay, that we talked about that. Manual start the generator. So the way you do that one, when you have an outage, you go start your generator, flip the transfer and plug it in, flip the transfer switch from the normal into the standby. Okay, then plug in your power out in this order. So that's that's we have to so start your generator flip the switch and plug in the outlet um and that's what they're talking about guys there's your generator you now you start gen is up and running go flip the switch here so here's step one start here step two flip the switch step three plug in any comments guys any questions so that's the next step we talked about this one Okay, now moving forward, you need to then the next step, guys, is to go to the top, so called top of the line. And instead of portable, and instead of portable, guys, now we have permanent. Now we have a permanent generator. Can you guys see permanent generator? Um, instead of running extension cord, now there is no extension cord whatsoever. Everything is permanently wired. You'll see from the portable generator, you have a feeder going from the generator to the transfer switch. Uh, automatically transfer the load when power um, um, is interrupted. Let me go to this, um, to the wiring diagram of that one because it's really, I thought it's interesting. Okay, here's your next step. Okay. Let's go back here. There you go. Here's the next, this is the top of the line for Willings, if you guys want to do it. Look at this. Now I have a permanently installed generator. I have a permanently installed generator. I do have an auto transfer switch. Can you guys see an auto transfer switch? Permanently installed generator, auto transfer switch, has an over temperature device in it. Sometimes you might need a disconnect if you don't have access to the over temperature device. Completely wired. I want to bring your attention, guys, to the control circuit. Control, this is for control, conduit, this is for power. Going to an auto going to a transfer switch there are three types of transfer switches guys they have manual transfer switch chad care to finish his coffee go flip the switch that's manual there's auto transfer switch it will send it will sense that the power have been lost here it, it looks at the power here when the power is lost guys it will send a signal to the generator to start that's what an auto does the auto transfer switch since the power have been lost send the signal to the to the generator generator starts when it starts it flip the power here flip that switch automatically you have to do anything they don't do anything flip you from going to the utility into going to the generator now everything in this panel is being powered by the generator that's the auto there's also static transfer switch the only difference is static is faster faster it doesn't interrupt the power any comments, guys? Any questions? Any comments? Any questions about this one? They call it double pull, double throw switches. So you can have um, uh, you can have two pole. You, in this case, you have you can have two pole or three pole circuit You have the options. If it's separately drive system, if you if you if it's if it's called separate drive system, and we'll talk about separate drive system when we go to commercial, guys. The only difference separate drive system you switch the neutral. Do you switch the neutral? Yep, separate drive system. What do you do? You need three poles. One for the neutral. Do you you don't want to switch the neutral? Yep. Then it's non separate of system. How many poles you need? Two. Any comments, guys? Any questions about this? Now this is permanently installed generator. Um, then I want to remind you guys: you continue to feed certain things from this panel, right? Don't forget that this panel continue to feed other loads. So Adam, in reality, inside your house, you have two panels. Both of them are fed from the utility. But when you lose power, one of them is backed up by the generator. Why can't we put the whole panel, the whole service on generator, guys? Dollars. 
costs you more. It's the only reason why we don't in the residential. In commercial, we can. The project that you're going to do with your friend Chad, the commercial project, is going to have an auto transfer switch. We're going to bring the generator to the auto, the utility to the auto, and out to the building. So if you lose the power, the generator will start and pick up every single load inside your building. So these, right now, the only loads that I'm picking are the critical loads. These are typically, guys, um, you know, from 3KW all the way to 15KW generators. 10KW is 10, 7 and a half is ideal for most of homes. 10KW can give you a lot of juice. I would say 10KW can cover almost all your house unless you're running air conditioning and dryer and range at the same time. So if you put a 7.5 kW, you almost covered everything everything in load in your house. Almost. And a refrigerator uh, and a dryer. Don't turn your dryer and air conditioning at the same time. So it might might overload it. Any comments, guys? Any questions? That, that's the top of the line for dwelling. Permanently installed, wired generator like this. Now, look what happened. We are running here on, can you guys see the red is coming in? Uh, on the, the power is coming in um, from the utility. Now, when you lose power, here's what happened. When you lose your power, very simple thing happened. Can you guys see how this guy flipped? Look at this. Flipped down to where? To the generator. Two things when you lose power happen. They sense their sensors here. They're sensing the power here. When they sense the power, guys, the power is lost. They send the signal directly to the generator. Say, Mr. Generator, fire. Start. The auto transfer switch send the signal, fire. They fire. You don't have to go fire the generator. The generator will automatically start. The generator starts. Then the generator starts pumping voltage. When it starts, it also flips the switch the way you're looking at it here. Now, everything here is powered by power by gen, by, by your generator. Any comments, guys, any questions? Any comments, any questions? That's what we do in dwelling. This, what you're looking at right now, is how they do it in commercial, too, for the most part. So that's your generator. I want to bring to your attention, guys, you can choose to have two pole circuit breakers or three pole auto transfer switches. The pole really stands for this one, Two, three. There's a two pole. Two pole is a switch. Can you guys see how switch my switch is coming in here? These are tied together. Here's my power. That's a two pole circuit breaker or auto transfer switch. If you want to make it a three pole, you put a third pole here, guys. And here's my switch tied together, of course. And this is a three pole circuit breaker. Three pole. Single pole. This is these are single pole, single throw. Now imagine double of these in both sides. There will be double of these to make it double pole, double throw. Double pole, double throw. They call them double pole, double throw. Double pole, there's the poles. Can you see there's two in each one? Double throw, two in each one. One goes to the generator, one goes to the utilities. You don't have to worry about that one, but that's why the DP, can you say DPDT, double pole, two poles. They throw it to two. Single pole, double throw is this way. Two pole, double throw is this way. So at the end, it throws either here or here. Any one of them throw here or here. So anyway, that's how they get you the transfer from one to another. Any comments, any questions? Typically, what we do guys here is also you drive, you go drive a ground rod and you ground your generator, the frame of your generator. Or if you're outside, um, um, Derek, my friend, and your ground rod is right in the area, you just go tied to the ground rod because the utility ground rod is right in the back there. So you just take a number 10 copper, tie it to the utility transformer, you're off to go. I want to bring to attention, guys, this conductor, this disconnect here. If you don't have access to this disconnect, then you have to have a disconnect for the generator. Typically, the generators have an access, you have a door, and there's a disconnect, you can disconnect the generator. So that's top of the line, uh, what you're going to do. Okay, so let me go see if we forgot something. Any comments, guys, any questions? Um, with your friend Chad, 
you when we go to sizing generators guys we have a software that you're going to be sizing gen based on that software diagram for a typical generator actual wiring consists of two on ground conductor equipment grounding of all the component so you can see guys when they when they wire it you have to have two hots and a neutral coming out of the gen a control wire has to be coming out of the gen in two different uh, conduits and an equipment grounding conductor you have to bring an equipment around a conductor or supply side bonding jumper, they call it, guys. Um, if your conduit is EMP, then you're done. That will be, uh, or any type of metallic, the equipment will be done. The grounding conductor will be done. Transfer switches. The transfer switch job, guys, auto transfer shift the power. The, the transfer switches is your job is to shift the power from one side to the other as in utility to generator or vice versa. So you're transferring, here's my power, shifting the power from normal, which is utility, into uh, standby, which is generator. Here's a few functions for them. First, they isolate the utility, so they don't allow you to connect to the utility. No feedback, so you don't feed back the generator. Sizes, you can get them from 40 all the way to 4,000, not 200. For dwellings, typically 200. But for non dwelling, you can go as high as 4,000 amp on these. Typically, what we use, guys, 40 amps are coming, 40, 60 amps, 100 amps are coming. Um, 40 amps are very common in, in dwellings. Because all what you need is just really back up 40 amps of your loads, the critical ones. What happened, guys, if, um, if you start your generator and you're feeding power, and if you don't disconnect yourself from the grid and the grid is down? What happened is you send power through the transmission line and you could hurt somebody who's working on the transmission line. So that's why they want you to isolate yourself from the grid when you run. Okay, there's two terms that you guys are going to be familiar with. Something is called non severity derived system and the other one is called severity derived system. If you understand it now, Karen, you're good to go for the whole uh, year because we're going to be talking about it. The only difference is in a non severity drive system, here's the neutral, here's my gen, and here's my utility, and the neutral, and here's my transfer switch. The neutral guys are tied together. My neutral, my neutral. Gen, utility, neutrals are tied, bolted together. That's non severity drive system. Severity drive system, gentlemen and ladies, here's my gen, here's my utility. Here's my transfer switch. What I do, here's my neutral here. Here's my neutral here. I, and here's my neutral coming out. This is neutral and out. The neutral out, getting a CL all bolted together. Here, they're switched. Can you guys see that? So I switch the neutral. I can pick between the neutral coming from the generator or the neutral coming from the utility. That's called a separately derived system. If it's a pretty rough system, they require you to take the neutral here, guys, and bind it to the ground. You bind the neutral to the ground at the generator for a separate drive system. For non separate drive system, you cannot bind the neutral to the ground at the generator level, so that the generator will be grounded, but not the neutral. Any comments, guys, about separate drive system? Which one of them is better than the other? You can run any one of them. If your generator is 15 kW or less, you have to go separate derived system anyway, so you have to switch the neutral. If you switch the neutral, Derek, you're going to pay more money because you have a three-pole auto transfer switch is more expensive than two-pole auto transfer switch. So be aware of that. Okay. Um, requires disconnect. So you need a disconnect for the generator, guys. Generator require a disconnect from 445.18. Said that the required disconnect for the standby generator to locate remote from the normal service disconnect. So you can put it remotely from the normal service disconnect. So you have to have a disconnect by the generator. That could be on the generator or within sight of the generator with some exception. So you can disconnect the power. Grounding portable generator, guys, are grounded through the cord. If you have a portable generator, all your grounding system is happening through the cord because you have an equipment grounding conductor in the cord. Hard wire generators, if you're using metallic wiring, EMT, that will be your grounding method. 
or you have to put an equipment grounding conductor with it. So when you tie your generator to the to the um, uh, through a cable, your cable have to have hot, neutral, two hots, neutral, and a ground. When you put a conduit between the generator and the panel or the transfer switch, you have to have four conductors in it. Two hots, neutral, and an equipment ground conductor. If it's PVC, if it's rigid or EMT, that will uh, that will work for you. Any comments, any questions, guys? Comments, questions. Sizing conductors. Here's my generator, guys, here. Here's my gen. The conductor, here's my overconfliction device. This conductor can be sized at 115% of the full load current of the generator. Okay? If your generator is here and the circuit breaker right on it, and you need to size this, this will be 1.25 times the full full load current. That's how I would do it. You multiply 1.25 because that's a, a continuous load, continuous load feeder. Can you guys see the differences? Do you see where, where this is located versus where this is located, the cable? So 115. Generator sizing. Generator for home. Um, Okay, when you size the generator, guys, typically when we size generator, I will give you a software that you're going to be using to size generator. When you size it for dwellings, you're going to add up the critical load, all the critical load that you have in the house, and throw 20% extra on it. Um, and then, of course, based on that one, you're going to size your transfer switch to be able to handle that one. So you size your generator. I have an example here for you. We're going to use in a second show you. <laughs> Like I told you guys, there is optional standby power system. For dwelling, we go under optional stand power system. That's what the article that talks about it. If you go there, it requires you to have to separate the generator power system from the um, from the utility. Okay, permanently installed generator and check for local sound. There is something called sound sound ordinance. Now. Uh, and um, if you decided to go put a 50 kW generator in your backyard, and that baby start humming, and your your generator your 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 neighbors start calling the city, so noise noise pollution. When you put a generator, guys, typically if you have 10 kW or less in dwellings, nobody worries. But if you have a commercial building in a dwelling area, um, be very aware that you have to have a noise issues. How do you solve the noise? They have attenuation enclosures. They put them in an enclosure that attenuate, uh, minimize, neutralize the noise. That's how they solve the problem. That becomes a major issue, guys, when we talk about sizing generators for, for commercial industrial building next project. When we bring our friends from um, Kohler and they talk, uh, Jerry will be talking a lot about uh, the sizing or how do you pick an enclosure to attenuate um, the noise, noise attenuation. They call it okay so when you size a generator pay attention to the noise the last thing i want to talk about guys um is how do you size for what size what what size gen do you want the generators are sizing kw and voltage guys so i told you five and seven and a half and ten what size do you want seven and a half chad how do you how do you how do you reach the size Here's how they size generator, guys. They size generator based on two factors. Factor number one, factor number one is the running load. They call it the running load. And factor number two is the starting load. If you guys understand this now, when I give you common software to size your generator for the two projects that's coming, it will be a piece of cake for you. When we size generators, we size them based on two factors. How much kilowatt we need to run and how many how, how many kilowatts we need to run and how many kilowatts we need to start start at the same time for example if you have your air conditioning and your um your say your air conditioning as well as your dryer both of them are running at 120. if you flip them on turn them on and start your generator your generator have to be strong enough to simultaneously start your air conditioning and your electrical dryer. Did you guys hear me? Have to be big fat boy, right? Um, then to start them at the same time. But 
you can reduce the size of that generator by being smart. How do you be smart? Okay, well, I don't start my dryer. First, I start my air conditioning. My air conditioning will start by itself on. After my air conditioning starts, I flip my dryer to start. Did you guys hear me? You can reduce the size of your generator by reducing the way you start your loads. <clears throat> I don't think you have a whole lot of control when you're dwelling, when you're doing dwelling. <clears throat> I guess you can personal, but be aware that if your generator keep tripping on you, <clears throat> you buy a generator, um, you keep tripping, make sure <clears throat> turn certain lights off, <clears throat> certain loads off, and then start your generator, and then start turning them one at a time. That's called the stopping mode. For example, a blender has a, a 1600 kW, a 1600 um, watt <clears throat> of running load when you start it for only 10 seconds, not forever, it will be seen as 700. Can you guys see the difference? Look at the AC units. If you have a 4,000 a 4, PTU, uh, the largest one you can get, which is, it will be seen as 6 kW, 6 kW. Look, can you guys see the difference? It go from 6 kW to run into 18 kW to start. Can you guys see the difference? See why running the generator, running them, starting the equipment is typically three to six times more oomph to start a piece of equipment than to run it. So you can you can reduce the size of your generator by starting the equipment gradually on steps. Start this load first, wait a couple of seconds, five. We're not waiting like an hour. You talk about 10 seconds, man. 10 seconds typically what it takes any load to start. Start up and running, flip the second switch, the third switch. So by doing it this way, especially if it's machines, you reduce the size of your generators. Before, so when you size your big generator, guys, Jen, it will have two sizes. It will have <clears throat> um, K, W, start, and it will have K W run. So you want to make sure your generator can run all the loads that you have and can start all the loads that you want to start at the same time. Typically, the start is two to four times more than the run. Any comments? Any questions? What happens, guys, if the if your generator cannot start the equipment, it will stall. It just can't can't start. It. It's too heavy. Imagine it's starting is like lifting things. If you have a heavy heavy thing, imagine that more you need more oomph just to pick it up, right? After you pick it up, you can run with it. But picking it up, that's a start. Same thing for a generator. To pick it up, to start it, it typically takes uh, three to six times more. So if if the if the pump is 10 amps, it will take 60 amps to start it. For 10 seconds, only lasts for 10 seconds. And it looks, guys, the starting load, it will look for a motor, it will look like this. It goes all the way up and it goes back. And you're looking at here, um, say here's 10 amps. Um, okay, so we're, we're, we're putting the amps in here. Here's 10, 10 seconds here. Up to 10 seconds. Here's my, um, okay, no, here's my uh, 10 amps. Is my 100 amps, and this is my 10 seconds. Up to 10 seconds, I can push 10 amps, 100 amps. After that, after that, I go down to normal. After that, I go down to normal. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Comments, questions? The starting capability of your motor. So that's all what I have for you guys. So hopefully this will um, will get us guys into sizing generators. Oops, into sizing generators. We'll do that as we as we move forward. As we move forward. <clears throat>